Some people actually want to sell it here. I brought some cash. <laughs> I brought cash. Oh, hundreds. You only charge $100. We better hope it's worth more than 100, Dean. OK. It's got to be 15, 20,000 if it could be no. attributed to Snow White. Oh. The Queen's coronation. I'm really glad you had this really good item. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll make an offer. I'll offer five hundred dollars. A chink, yes. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you very much. Don't sell anything on one opinion. If you get two, you've got half a chance of getting it right. From the Zoomerplex in historic Liberty Village, the Zoomer with Libby Snymer. Welcome to the Zoomer. I'm Libby Snymer. Are you looking to downsize or do you just want to purge your home of some of the stuff you've collected over the years? It's often difficult to know what's worth holding on to and whether your knickknacks and collectibles are actually worth anything. We've gathered a group of experts led by Paul Kenny to examine some of the treasures brought in by our audience. But before we dive in, let's tee up the top. They say one man's trash is another man's treasure. That's certainly true for the 85% of Canadians who participate in Canada's second-hand economy. A whopping $28.5 billion worth of second-hand items changed hands last year. That equals close to 2.3 billion items. And in Ontario alone, second-hand buying and selling exceeded $10 billion. Not exactly small change. Last year, the average Canadian earned an extra $1,134 by finding buyers for stuff they no longer needed. And on their purchases, saved an average of $825. So if you've ever wondered if that old brooch sitting in your drawer or that painting collecting dust in the attic holds any value, give consignment a shot. After all, you've got nothing to lose and a lot to gain. Well, as you can see, we already have a number of items spread out around the table here. So what is the first item that catches your eye, Paul? Well, actually, before I get to that, I want to we're switching up this show. We're also going to be buying at this show. So if some people actually want to sell it here, I brought some cash. <laughs> I brought cash. Oh, hundreds. So if someone wants to sell something and we have a willing buyer like one of us, we might buy it from you. Or if we don't want it, there might be some person in the audience who says they want to buy it. For, for your appraised value or can they bargain well, no, a little? The, between a willing buyer and a willing seller, I can't get in the middle of that. Okay. Unless I get my cut. Okay. <laughs> but, oh, I'm going to be the first item today, actually, is these things here. As much as I love gold, these are stumpers. These are an item. It looks like a seal to me. Resin. These are all women on the front of this. And a naughty's on the back. But I couldn't find any information on this, as much as I looked. But this is a perfect item to be put in consignment. You want to get the most you can for it. If you don't know the value of something then you leave it up to the open market to set a value on it. This could go for thousands. I'd love yeah. this piece. This piece, someone's going to love this. The eroticism. Erotica. And the size, it's perfect for collecting because it's small and fit in any shelf. This is a beautiful piece. So who does this belong to? Who brought this in? Hi. How are you doing? OK, where did you get this? I bought it at an auction. Okay. I went to buy some furniture and I couldn't afford it, and this was about thirty dollars. Thirty dollars? I get <laughs> it. Was about thirty years ago. <laughs> I hear. We're, we're, we're done. <laughs> we're done. I'm not the desperate. <laughs> no, no. I would say on something like this, I mean, it's five hundred to a thousand of anyone's money without even thinking, and I think that what you would end up getting at auction is more. We'd rather put this in consignment or auction. That would be your, my, our advice to you, OK? And this item here is the same type of thing? You bought this at auction? Or? No, that's uh, my father lived in France, in Paris, and he bought it back. Looks like a little a resin snuff box with sterling. I'm going to say that this, about $1,000. How old is, would that be? 
I don't know, I'm going to figure out. I'm pretty good. I think it's about uh, 1880, 1890 in that area. Mm -hmm. Just with the resin like it is like that and with the, the work on this. Yeah. Maybe a bit older, I'm going to find out. It says anything that was made for export to the United States mm -hmm. or North America would, after 1920, say made in Paris. Mm -hmm. And after, before, between 1890 and 1920, it will just say Paris on it. These are wonderful items. And uh, this one here, like I say, not often I admit to being stumped, but... I know I've never 20 seen people love to have like this. this. That's why I bought it. <laughs> no, <laughs> because it was so you've unusual. got an excellent eye. You've got an excellent me, eye. It took me a while to realize what it was about. Oh, <laughs> well, then I'm worried about your tiny bed, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bringing this in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what's next? Well, listen, I'm going to turn it over to Michael here for a minute because this, is, this, this item right here is a gold... Uh, Charm bracelet, which a lot of people have when they traveled. What do you mean, when you travel? Why? Well, you Mexican sombrero there. You went to Mexico, they give you gold run, a gold sombrero. It's also got a heart, lay, a heart uh, gold right there. rocket on it. Yeah. But unfortunately, if these were in silver, we actually can sell them. When they're in gold, the price of the gold is going to usurp any of the collector value. Okay. As a general rule. Unless some of the charms have got moving parts in them. Sometimes you'll have a piece that opens up and you have something inside it. But Mike, what would that be worth? In nine carat for the bracelet, the charms are a mixture. You're around $900 right now in gold. Okay, so I'm back to my $30 bid. No. <laughs> <laughs> if someone wanted to sell it, we would actually that's, melt that. That's what we would, yeah. yeah. We would figure we would out, we would take it. all the charms off. We would actually it would end up being melted. Okay. And some of them don't want it. It's worth more than to have it, but it is still gold. Okay, what's next? And the watch here? Okay, we'll call up the owner. Okay. Who brought in the gold watches? Hi. That was, I believe, my great-great-grandfather's watch. He was the U.S. ambassador to Chile oh, at wow. some point. Anyway, that was his watch. It's a repeater watch. You can flick a thing on the side, and it will tell you what time it is. And Dad used to play it for me, and I could just sit on his knee, okay, Daddy, do your watch, what time is it? And, or he would say, you tell me what time it is, and it tells you what time it is. Yes, it's been in the family for a while. Sounds like it's gonna stay in the family, isn't it? I think it is, yes. <laughs> My son is, is uh, panting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you had to give him a value on it, what value would you give him on this? This one, you're about... Uh, to sell to her son. 3000 3, to 3500 okay. it, it came from Paris originally, okay. uh, around the same time as the, uh, the Paris Expo. Okay. So they were big at that point um, when the Eiffel Tower was presented. Mm -hmm. And pocket watches like this were made for different functions to be given as gifts. Okay. Thank you. This item here... So, oh. so it's a beautiful book, and of course Frank Baum's very famous, uh, probably most famous for Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. but this is still quite collectible in that regard. How did your family come to get it? Um, my great-grandmother uh, wrote for the Globe and Mail, which was, at that time was the Mail and Empire, and yep. I guess a friend of hers was Stanley Waterloo, and so Patsy was my grandmother, and he's written a note, I'm going to give this to the author, um, whatever it said. I can't read his writing. And so my grandmother was Kathleen Patricia, so Mr. L. Frank Baum wrote to Miss Kathleen, I hope you read my book and will consider me, me to be among your friends. Best regards, L. Frank Baum. And it's a wonderful book. He, he does each nursery rhyme and then makes a story of the nursery, writes it like a, like a story, and um, what Little Boy Blue did. It's a fascinating story. You've, you've got a crossover piece here because, of course, the book has value. Yeah. It appears mm -hmm. to be a first edition. You've had it rebound, obviously. I have had, and I've had done. a box made for it oh, yeah. to protect so it. So typically this book, in mint condition, this could be a $10,000 book. It appears to be a first edition from 1897. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this condition, probably around $2,000. But then, of course, now you've got a handwritten letter, which is much better than just an autograph. And it, uh, this book's probably a few thousand. His autograph, again, mm -hmm. is probably worth four or $5,000. Mm -hmm. So... You know, you're probably looking around six or seven thousand, which mm -hmm. 
I mean, you're keeping in the family, that's fine, but typically you would have to get authenticated. And I have no doubt sure. this is a real autograph, but <laughs> it's still better to have that paperwork just to yes. prove to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a beautiful piece. I've never seen one like Great. that. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> What do you want to see? My friend Victoria brought some coins, so, okay. All right, hi. Hi. Uh, I brought this coin, um, and I found it on a beach at Virginia Beach when I was seven years old, and it had washed up. Um, it was all green at the time, so I took it back and, um, and cleaned it up, and it says that it's uh, 1863. This would probably be what we call a VF, Army and Navy. I would have to look this up in my book. Sorry. 1863 Liberty Head Air Army Civil War. Okay. Yeah. $10 on eBay. $10. <laughs> you should put in a little bit of a package. We've got two by twos, and you should put in that, especially if you're not selling it. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. And see how I'm holding it? Okay. I want you to hold it the same way. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's some film in a projector here on the table. Wow, that's a little bit rough. Magic Lantern? Okay. Who brought this in? Some of these. This would be the light be behind it. And you got all the pictures. Now, these are older ones. Holy cow. What year do you think this is made in? Oh, 89. I had that when he was a child, and he was born in 1910. Have you been through these slides and actually figured out who the images are? Um, I know there's some that seem to relate to a war, and I can't figure it out. It kind of looked like Civil War, but yeah. uh, no, if, no, if you had a Lincoln or something, it could be worth ten, fifteen thousand right. well, dollars It has, uh, you know, kilties in it, so I don't think there were any people in kilts in the Civil War. No, 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 no probably no. not. There are 90 slides in there. I mean, but it could be Boer War, sets. perhaps. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Many sets. Uh, some of them were my, were my father's. Some of them, well, most of them, actually, oh, I just bought. Oh, yeah, my father had that. That one was one of his. The big set was his. Um, so he had about a dozen, and the rest are ones They're that I They're almost like later. cells. So about eight of them in good condition, not with any of the Lincolns, but oh, I'm just getting a closer picture of it. So you, like you may actually still have some of them. Uh, yeah, I looked online. Exactly. Some of the ones yeah. there. What were they selling for there? 32 bucks. This is not a lot of money. Because well. a lot of people would have saved and these wouldn't have broken over the years and they would have saved them. And this being made out of steel, these mm. always survive. Mm. If you get something that's made out of... Uh, but the uh, war images, the, the war other images ones that aren't caricatures. I know the Keystone one, which was when they brought... This was uh, you, usurped... That's Civil War, yeah. So, so anything Civil with the wars. Anything one Civil War is $120. So it depends on the South. Okay. And what happened was, the demise of these was settled when they had moving pictures, like Charlie Chaplin and stuff like that. I wish I had better news for you, but you're still gonna enjoy it, right? Well, I wasn't expecting to get rich off these, but I like having them. But, does anyone in the audience wanna buy these? Does anyone wanna recapture the childhood of Vaseline and play the prices? <laughs> no, it's just okay. Uh-oh. You still own these. Oh, I'll make an offer. I'll offer $500 for the slides and the projector. Oh. Ka-chink, yes. Yes, 500, certainly. Done. Done. Yeah. 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 One, two, three, four, five. Thank you very much. Been yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Yes. Show. All right. Oh. I'll okay. buy the book too, but I know you're not yeah. selling that. So oh. the book is probably the most wonderful item here. Unless something else really surprises us, that book is great. And we will find out whether there's anything that's going to surprise us when we come back after a break. I'm walking out here with $500, and that buys my allegiance to the show. Yeah, I didn't even justify the price increase. I just saw that it's old and uh, there's mystery. If I get one key image in there, it could be worth $1,000. One that has a sports team on it. They're worth money. Oh, there's the All Star game in '91. I haven't seen that. That would probably sell twenty, twenty-five dollars quite easily.
I know for my kids, they would not have any interest in any of this. So it's probably for me, it's a matter of finding a value and then selling them. We have one that has a sports team on it. They're worth money. Oh, there's one, I think, at the top. Yeah, there's a few. Like the Maple Leaf one right here. Yeah. Oh, there's the All-Star Game in 91. I haven't seen that. That would probably sell $20, $25 quite easily. Wow. I, I knew we had a good show, but I didn't know it was this popular. You have an item. Go to the front. You, don't. you know, this is nice. It's probably around twelve to fourteen thousand. Wow. Single with no. Come on in. I was wishing I had bought some of the stuff that I have around my house. Welcome back. Coming up next, we're going to get to some of my items, and. I brought in this pot. It is a pre-Confederation container from the Brantford Pottery, and it's actually one of three that we own. It's from F.P. Gould and Company, and it says Canada West. That's pre-Confederation. And there's a bit of a collection of them in the Royal Ontario Museum. They're written up. And I started buying these at auction about 20, 22 years ago because F.P. Gould was my husband's great-grandfather. Oh. I bought two, and uh, the third one, interesting story, we got a call out of the blue from the parents of a neighbor who had, we had never met, and they said, we, we want you to come over. We said, yeah. okay, we had no idea, and they said... We're uh, downsizing, we're, we're getting rid of stuff, and we want you to have this. Wow, that's a nice neighbor. Yeah. Okay. So what we're looking for is a flower. Even if Libby, even this wasn't Libby's pot, it's still a good pot. What we have here is the blue flower, and they like the name on it. These pots will go for, in today's market, 300 to $400. Libby, I think you got a good deal, because before, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, these would have gone for six, seven, eight hundred $800. People were at auctions, you couldn't touch them because it, especially with the big blue flower on them. Size matters if it's a big bit, bit bigger. If you had a lid on, it's a little bit better as well. But also having the stamp, the name, because people are trying to collect history. Like you're collecting history. You're exactly. collecting your family's history. Yep, yep. It's a little bit the downsize is a couple of chips next. But it's a, this is a really nice item. And can I ask about another item as well? Sure. Okay, right here. This uh, is... The double record vinyl set with a text of the Queen's coronation in 1953. I'm really glad you have this really good item. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I was hoping maybe you could make us an offer on that. <laughs> Glenn, where are you? You're, you're overspending for stuff. Come on. No. Only if the Queen signed it. Yeah. <laughs> on these here, people are buying this resurgence right now in vinyl. But they want the rock and roll, the jazz, the blues. This would sit. I could, it might sell if we put it on the Never Never plan and put $18 on it. <laughs> it might sell somewhere in the world, maybe in England. And, um, but it's in excellent condition because no one ever played it. Uh, <laughs> well, funny you should mention that. My, my husband said, Oh, it's too bad we can't play this because we no longer have a turntable. And I said, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Not all vinyls created equal. Okay. Now. Okay. Who these, does this belong who to? Who does this belong to? Okay. Come on. Come on up. Hey. Good enough anchors, Claire. Okay. Hey, okay. So how? What's the story behind this? Oh, just uh, I had it uh, inherited it from an aunt. An uh, aunt? Who, did she give you anything else? Uh, yes, <laughs> she did. Good. We couldn't okay. bring them all in. Okay. Uh, when I was younger, even I even when I traveled, collected uh, souvenir spoons, but she collected them a lot longer. And, uh, but some are souvenir souvenirs in like different cities, different countries. Yes. Others are silver. Others are not probably not worth anything, I think. Well, no, they are still because people do collect them. In this case here, you've got pewter, silver plate, which we crush all the time. Most of our silver plate, but we don't crush, crush these. We put these in auctions. A lot like this, you know, not as fancy a frame will sell 15 to $20 all the time. But what we would do is take the sterling ones out because the sterling one would be worth five, six, ten dollars. These have got no material value in, uh, not worth melting. But people still collect souvenir spoons. Like this week's auction, how many? We got 15 lots like this in the sale. Paul, one, of course, there's a couple of crossovers. There's some sports ones there. So when is you there? get a sports one, there's one from the 
91 All-Star game when oh, Toronto hosted. Oh, there's something, anything sports related, Cute. sports people are crazy. Okay, and they'll buy, if they don't own it, they'll, not him, the other sports it's people the are crazy. It's the ones from the cities and geographic yeah. ones that really don't have much value. Yeah. But if you have something related to an event or something, it'd be better. I would pull those out, you know. Okay. We have people who buy them every single week. We never have them left over. Paul, okay. your other thing to look for, though, is collectibles, Disney, anything name branded that way, anything associated with Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, Harley Pepsi. Davidson, yeah. Pepsi, anything where there's a collector outside of spoons, like, like, like Glenn was saying, any crossover items. Okay, now this, I'm going to take one. This is yours? Thank you. Thank you. No. Okay. okay. All right. Whose is this? Okay. Here no we problem. go. This is silver plate, okay? Yep. This is what we crush, and we actually say we crush it. Uh, we do not care what it looks like. People actually clean it before they bring it to us. We, this is on copper. It'll say on the back. It says on the back who made it. And that they made a lot of this was made in Hamilton, Ontario. <laughs> I was... Uh, Marlboro plate, EP on copper. No, but lead mounts. Um, and this is weighing about eight, nine pounds. You would get around twenty-seven dollars for this, I mean, just by the weight. <laughs> Mainly because it's copper. If it was mm -hmm. on brass, it'd be less. But we don't care because we're just letting it go. This happens to be a little bit nicer. But if you put seventy-five dollars into refinishing this, you'd have a sixty-dollar tray. Oh. <laughs> okay. Actually, it's good for brunch. So. <laughs> yeah. No, it's fully sort of functional. You know, we tell people, don't. I don't care what it looks like. If it's got rust on it or whatever's coming. All the silver mm -hmm. plate, we buy it all. If it's on copper, we pay more. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, let's take a break and we'll have more when we come back. It has the little Disney marks on the bottom here. It's an original. These are right from the cartoons. My wife found it in somebody's into somebody's driveway on garbage day five years ago. And it's 1835. How much you hoping to get for this? I, I think it's worth at least $200. I don't know what it's worth. I have no idea what that clock's worth. I found it in the garbage. <laughs> Welcome back. We are here with Paul Kenny of the Consignment Heroes, and many of us have old artwork hanging around. Yet, very few may know its true value, so we have quite a number of works of art here. Paul, where should we begin? I gotta get the owner. Who owns this? This. Come on down. Have a microphone. Hi. Hi there. How you doing? Good. You know what this is? It's a Disney cell. Thanks. Okay. But this is not the ones that you saw in the stores. This is from 47. This one here, and you, you've got a couple others. Where are they? There's Mickey, and you got Dopey. Dopey's my favorite because it reminds me of Bogart. On this one here, we got Mickey, which the iconic Mickey, and we've got Donald over here. Okay, these are all probably before 1950, which is unusual because most of the stuff uh, we don't get like this. It has the little Disney marks on the bottom here. It's an original. These are right from the cartoons. Like, and this, the, when they say limited edition, there's only one of this actual scene. There's a lot from that movie, but most of them, these were probably presented to someone who worked at Disney. Is that what happened? Well, uh, it was my grandfather who had done, uh, I guess, some legal work for Walt himself. Okay. And uh, after the work was completed, uh, Walt Disney gifted my grandfather these cells, and then they have now come to me. Do you have a letter from him? Now, Signed by him? Unfortunately, the documentation was stored in uh, a jewelry box, and uh, we were broken into and burgled. Okay. So the actual true documentation, the certificates, are now gone. No, but these are real, right as rain. Um, the Walt Disney autograph, Glenn? How much? Well, his autograph's probably three, 4,000, but if that sells from Snow White, it which is. came out in 38, that's the groundbreaking movie of yeah. all time. Yeah. Walt seven. Disney, after that, was given honorary degrees at Harvard, Yale, changed the whole movie industry. That one alone would probably even dwarf the Mickey or any of those. Well, that's why he's a dwarf. <laughs> so, what? Uh, <laughs> no, but it, it, I think you'd be looking at it's got to be 15, 20,000 if it could be no. attributed to Snow, Snow White. Are you going to say more? No, no, they mean, they mean a lot of some of these. I like this guy. 
I like, but get his cash. That's why he still got it, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> On these here, yeah, there, some can go for that kind of money, especially if it's an iconic scene like that or like this one like here. But most of the time they go between 1500 and 2500 U.S. though, which might be 20000 Canadian soon. Yeah. <laughs> so as a collection, this is probably going to be worth $35,000, thirty thousand dollars. You know, and it'd be something. These are nice pieces. It'd be nice if they were signed by Walt, though. No, I know. But thank you for bringing these in. Thank you for coming in with these. I'm going to give you this back. Okay. Well, who owns this radio? Come, Come on, on in. Down. The T Everyone knows we have the TV museum here. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about this radio. This is a 1932 uh, RCA, they call it a P31. And okay. it's, uh, it's a 45 pound portable radio. It has a handle. <laughs> what, portable for Atlas? What do you mean? <laughs> this, this radio back then sold for about $150. Okay, what would it sell for today? It's about $500. That's all? Uh, it's the first portable radio. How many did they make? They that, must have that, made a lot. They, there, there's about four or five of these left, as far as I know. Four and or five, a, and it's only four, five? There's not a lot of people that collect old radios. Well, That's how, how do you know how much it goes for now? I, I, I look on, like, eBay no. and uh, other sites and stuff. But it's only $500. Come okay. back to your seat. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. What from are you pointing From the modern again? to the not-so-modern. Okay, this Sorry. looks like it's uh, from Indonesia. Bali, Africa? Yeah. Who owns this? Come oh. on over. I've seen you before. Uh -huh. Now, okay. Oh, this is signed. These things here are sold as, this is a very, very famous carver, this whole family. His stuff would go up to a couple of thousand dollars. In the shape that this is in, this is probably going to be between 150 and 250. So, and just because of the damage a bit here, um, you don't see as much of his work, but these are very collectible. It would probably sell right away. It might sell a little bit more if you had two enthusiastic buyers on the line at the same time. And it's always good. Now, we talk about this on the show, about the signatures. You want to put something online, if you put the name of the, the sculpture on there and an African statue, there are going to be many more people who go and see it, okay? That's just a hint. That's what we do. Thank you very much for bringing it in. <laughs> Whose clock is this? Come on down. You're back. I'm back. Uh, yes. Now, should we flip? You want to flip it right side up? Probably a good idea. It's almost like one of those paintings. You don't want to know which way is upside down. Okay. You're missing part of it. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. That, that's part of that's at home. Reverse painted. What story have you got on this? That's interesting. Uh, about besides hard five, five, oh, oh, they turn. About five or six years ago, the, my wife was wandering down the street and she found this at the end of somebody's driveway on garbage day. Oh, <laughs> wow! You and, beat the garbage man to it. <laughs> okay. She did, and it's a Seth Thomas from about 1935 to 1940. I, I have a clock guy in Aberfoyle who. Who, who repaired it and made it work again. How much that cost you? It only charged $100. We better hope it's worth more than 100 Dean. OK. <laughs> I love the graphics here. This is yeah. the reverse paint on the other side. Yeah. A little bit of work. You wouldn't want to even fix that. But in today's market, because of people have these, nobody wants these anymore. That's and even right. watches are going out of style in a lot of cases. Maybe $150, yeah. mm -hmm. 100, maybe 200 because if it got someone enthusiastic. But if someone said, I would not say no, if someone came up and said, offered you $200, take the money. Okay. In Wait good shape, oh. yeah. in good shape oh. with different subject matter on the, on the glass plates, clock sells for five, 600. With the different subject matter, okay. With different subject matter. The Americana though, the American subject matter, putting this on eBay like in the States, might raise your value. The problem is this is not in good shape. Thank you for bringing it in. I like your radio a lot more. <laughs> OK. All right. When we come back, more with the Consignment Heroes. This should be gold along here. As a vinaigrette, depending on who made it, this is probably 450, maybe even better.
Paul Kenny of the Consignment Heroes and a number of experts he's brought along to help the members of our audience and possibly you at home figure out the value of your artwork, jewelry, and antique furniture. What are we looking at next? Edward VIII. I'm sure that's what this is. This is the king who didn't want to become king. Abdicated and then lived off his friends for the next 20 years or 40 years. Uh, but those, uh, this is the pottery made for his coronation, okay, May 12th, 1937. He decided he had better things to do than be king. So what we have here is that they made a lot of stuff and they didn't get a chance to sell it. So there's an awful lot on the market. This is a prime example of what we're going to call English Hang tchotchke. Hang on. So Who's is who? this? You again. Okay. <laughs> Did you bring a band down here? Okay. Okay. So this here, this is English. You know it's Edward VIII, right? Yeah. And you know, you, do you have other royalty stuff? Um, not a great deal. You it's just like this because it's big, portable? It's and nice. It is nice, but in this case here, mm -hmm. um, this is um, probably paint, painted by uh, kids. You can see that it's just, they made it as fast as possible. This was souvenir wear, and it's in today's markets, probably this might go for $100, okay? It's in good shape with no chips, like a crock we had up here before, okay? Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Okay. Who does this belong to, this piece of glassware? This is a well-loved uh, piece. I hope so. Where'd you get it? I was uh, handed down to me. My mom and dad passed. I got that. I believe it's from Scotland. Uh, it might be from England. There's a chance if it's Royal Briarly. It's called Cut to Clear. So you've got the crystal underneath, and then they put this layer on, and then they cut away the part that they don't want to be green, okay? Probably, if it's Royal Briarly, you might get $100, but it's rough. You've had plants in it, but you're still going to take this home and enjoy it, right? I am indeed, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's a nice, it, I bet you it looks great in the sunlight. It's sentimental, and it's, uh, yeah. it's a beautiful piece, so. This is a snuff box. Right. It does open. Shawproof, though. It says uh, uh, Paisley, Scotland on it. Okay. 1846. It says it right in there. Does it say who makes it? Okay. And this one here? Not that I Match can Match safely. Find. Oh, there, there you it go. is. Okay. So I don't know if the camera can get this. The little tax marks, those hallmarks are right there. Where you might see uh, uh, an anchor and a, uh, a lion's head and a letter date. The letter date tells you what year it was made. The anchor tells you it would be made in Birmingham, but this is not be made in Scotland. And the, um, the line says, it tells you that the taxes were paid on it, okay? So on this piece here, it also got this inlay. This would probably sell for, in this market, a match safe like this, uh, with the stones on like that, I'd probably get around 75 to $100. Okay, now, a lot of people have seen these little stones like this. When you see them on, um, you see them on the jewelry or in the sporns and stuff, someone told me that when a Scottish soldier got killed, that was, you're supposed to take that off of them, and that was to pay for their burial. Interesting. I could be Very wrong, though. No, okay. You this, sound like, it sounds right. Uh, this is a vinaigrette. It'll be sterling silver. This should be gold along here. And because people back in 1840, a lot of people didn't take baths right away. And uh, this would take the smell away. Okay. okay, they'd have a little smell in there, and they would carry it around and open it up, and okay. As a vinaigrette, depending on who made it, uh, gold like this is a big one for a vinaigrette. Uh, this is probably 450, maybe even better. Depending on them, it'll all come down to who made it, okay? And it's a beautiful piece. And like a snuff box is still good, but they're usually a little bit bigger, okay? It but feels this, like a paperweight, too. I imagine this is sterling as well. It's an intricate work on it. Wow. So. There's an F up in the back. The uh, young gentleman was okay, looking at it earlier. Okay. Did you find the other marks and where it's made? No, all the I uh, got it was that lion rampant. It's got the lion rampant on it, so you know it's sterling. And okay, it's got, but you didn't find it. It has a date. Yeah, the date oh. year. It's uh, it's an E. We had a collection of these miniatures like this, and the last one we had like this, we got about four hundred dollars for it. Is that right? Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. These Thank are you. Really great items. <laughs> great. Oh, okay. Oh. Who owns the children's silverware? Come on down, please. How you doing? I have a microphone. Doing? Hello. Now, where's the story? Where'd you get uh, it? <laughs> it's my husband's grandmother's, because of the uh, initials on it. Okay. 
The marks, now you, it is sterling. Your marks are right there, like there, okay. right yeah. as we were talking before. Yeah. They're all hand stamped in there with the maker's mm -hmm. mark, mm -hmm. the year, the tax stamp, and um, what city was done in. Okay, and this is monogrammed yeah. as well, okay. A set like this will sell for easy $100. Mm -hmm. It's a really, yeah. really nice yeah. item. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank, for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there's more after the break. Stay tuned. This is a Bobby Orr rookie card from 1966. This card's worth about 9,000 US. people here who are anxious to have their items assessed by Paul Kenny of the Consignment Heroes on Zoomer Radio. So let's dive right back in. Paul, you want to go to these cards? Yeah, those other people have to wait. This is okay. mine. Oh, okay. And I actually know this is first-hand knowledge. I ha I've had this card for about six months, and this is one of those cards. It's a Bobby Orr rookie card from 1966. This card sold last night for $800 US. It has... Uh, some professional checking on it. The guy put, used ink on it. This card's worth about 9,000 US. The difference on, this is Bobby Orr's rookie card. Gordy Howe rookie card just sold for $62,000 from 1951. And it wasn't even perfect. It was just nice. Now, who owns this belt that doesn't fit me? <laughs> Almost fits me. Fit me 25 years ago, maybe. What do you know about this belt? Nothing. Only, <laughs> only know that my parents, three or four of them in the house, and I own one of them, even though I have 10 siblings. <laughs> oh, OK. And then when I left Hong Kong in 1968, my mom gave it to me. This paid for your passage. You know this is silver, right? I didn't know what it was. Yeah, this is silver. OK, and it's a Chinese export silver. In this case here, this is very collectible. The Chinese are buying. It's got Chinese export marks inside it. In there, I don't know if it comes out, but we can see it under a loop. It's in perfect shape. Someone would love to collect this. This is probably, depending on what it weighs, by the scale here, this would probably sell for between seven and eight hundred dollars. As silver, I could buy it off you. It weighs about, uh, I don't know, that looks like $120 worth of silver. Which would you rather get? <laughs> well, that's a good thing about it. Thanks. Thank you very much for bringing that in. Who owns this piece here? OK. What can you tell me about this? I, I won it on a, um, a radio program, very famous channel, Zoomer. Oh, OK, right. <laughs> Leonard Cohen was in town. He was being honored. It was around 2014. Mm -hmm. Great. Have you ever had it evaluated? No. They made 5,500. Now, what value did you come up with this? On About $200 US. That's still not bad. It's a print. They made 5,500 of them. Are you sure? Right. Yeah. We have multiple sites we've checked. That's mine also. Oh, OK. Uh, the story's not nearly as good. OK. No, it's, it's a litho. It's nice. It's a hunting scene. It's got some water damage. It's water yeah. damage. There's some molding. $20, $15, if it goes for that. Right. Uh, because we put it up, um, we'll put them in lots on our auctions like that. But we could send, we, we sell it around the world, so there might be somebody. But it's not, it'll cost more to ship it than it's worth. Okay. That's the problem, okay? Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> when we come back, final thoughts from the consignment heroes, Paul Kenny and our panel of experts. In another episode of The Zoomer, we discuss China and human rights. Sandra wrote on Facebook, Human rights are being trampled on in China every day. It's hard to see photos and videos of innocent people being treated so poorly. Audience member John wrote an email saying, It's incredible to see how things tucked away in the basement can be worth a few dollars or hundreds. I guess it's time to do some spring cleaning. 
Keep the comments coming in and connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and via email at rsvp at zoomermedia.ca. Don't forget, for free tickets to the show, go to www.universe.com and search Zoomer Media and log on to www.thezoomertv.com for full episodes and more. Welcome back. Our panelists will leave you with some final thoughts or final tips, starting to my left. Uh, there wasn't anything for me here today with my expertise, but e even any of the, the Nintendos, the Marios, your Pokemons, your Yu-Gi-Ohs, any of that stuff that you might have bought for your kids or their grandkids and you've stored away for maybe safekeeping, it still may be worth money. Bring that down to that stuff's still worth something. Just touching on when Paul looked at that silver tray earlier, the silver plate may not be worth a lot, but you might have in your basement actual silver. Don't throw it away until you've had someone look at it who knows what they're looking at. That's my point. There might be something there that you have that you think is cheap, actually isn't. In terms of what we do at our company, paper is probably our most valuable items. And everyone has boxes of paper, whether it be correspondence, you know, magazines. There's incredible value. We're talking hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions in paper. There could be some good items in there that might have famous autographs or just rare uh, published items that were made in very limited runs that are worth a lot of money. As far as jewelry is concerned, if you're going to sell it, you don't have to clean it. You're going to do more damage by cleaning it. And watches, get them looked at before you figure out whether you're fixing it or not, because 90% are not worth it. Don't sell anything on one opinion. If you get two, you've got half a chance of getting it right, OK? You always get a second opinion. OK, well, thank you for being with us. And I, for one, are go I'm going back home, and I'm going to check through all of that old stuff my husband inherited from his very old Canadian family. I hope you do the same. We'll see you soon. And it's time to zoom out. <laughs>